Hi, I'm Erica from the Alameda String Academy, and we are going to talk about Lightly Row from Suzuki Book Number One. Uh, Lightly Row is the second song in uh, the Suzuki Book, and um, if you're one of my students, you'll have been playing for a little bit while uh, before we've reached this piece. Um, and one of the fun things about this piece is it's actually a culmination of all of the skills that we've been working on already. Um, and we, we really just get to breeze through using our note reading skills, recognizing uh, step-wise motion in the, um, in the music, on the, on the music staff, versus skipping um, and uh, looking for patterns in the music as well. So one of the things that I like to do first is see if I can notice where the steps and skips are. And if you look in the first line, you can see right away we have skips first from E, C, C, and then we have another, we have a step up from, from the D, and then a skip down again, D, B, B. Measure three, are we still stepping or are we, are we still skipping or are we going to start stepping? We're stepping up. And we're actually playing the first half of an A major scale. If we were to keep going, we'd finish the A major scale. So it's kind of fun to notice these little um, tidbits here in the music, and that helps us to kind of piece everything together. So the kind of the partner to the scale is the arpeggio, which is sort of the leapfrogging um, uh, a combination of notes that get us from the first note to the third and then to the fifth. Um, note in the scale, and that sounds like this. Okay, and that arpeggio, is what we call it, that skipping leapfrogging figure, is hidden somewhere in the second line. So the first line is all about that scale. The second line has the arpeggio hidden in. Um, and so we can look for that, we can find that little figure. On the third line, one of the things that we can look for is, the, is a pattern. Um, and uh, the pattern that I see is um, we, we have the same note, B, for five notes, B, 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 and then we step up. Step up, step up, B, 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 C sharp, D. And we have that same pattern again, five notes the same, and then two step up except this time starting one note higher, C sharp, C, 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 D, E. Um, and then, wow, by now we've learned the whole song because if we look really closely, if we use our detective eyes, we can notice that the last line of the piece is something we've already learned. Putting this all together gives us a really great picture of how lightly row goes, and it can help us to develop what I like to call a road map in our mind of what the so where the song takes us, um, where we've got the first uh, line has the scale, the second line has the arpeggio, the third line has patterns, and the fourth line is the same as hmm, one of the other lines. I won't tell you, you have to find it yourself. So one of the things that we always want to keep in mind when we're learning a piece, since we have four lines here and they all have different things, is that it's a good idea after you've played through the song and kind of get your head wrapped around it, learn one line at a time and just see, you know, give yourself five, ten tries um, to, to read through the song or to read through the line. And you, I bet by the time you have played it three times, you'll have figured out what the hard part is. And you won't need to play it seven more times to know exactly what you want to practice uh, in order to learn the line fully, okay? So if you give yourself a couple times to, to repeat it, you'll figure out the hard, hard part and then you can kind of zone in on that and identify what you want to practice. And then you will take a smaller part and really practice that. So I might realize in the first line, when I play, boy, I'm having a really hard time remembering what finger I need 
in the second measure, oh, so I might say, okay, I'm going to practice the first and second measure. And before I play it again, I'm going to make sure that I really know what fingers I need, okay? So I might go through and say the names of the notes first. E, C sharp, C sharp, D, B, B. Next, I might say the names of the, the, the numbers of the fingers that I'm using. Open E, A2, A2, A, uh, A3, A1, A1. Open two, two, three, one, one. And then I might actually do it with my fingers. I could do it here. This is great for young learners. So we, we only have one goal and that's to put them down and put our fingers down on our thumb, okay? Um, it feels very tactile, it's easy to feel. And then we might do that on our fingerboard, okay? And it does, you could do it out of time. You could say E, you know, where's the C? C, okay, C, we're gonna play the C twice. And then we have D, three. And then we have one, one. Okay, now I'm gonna try saying it in time. E, C, C, D, B, B. Good, and now I can get my D and my B, my three and my one to work together in time. So when I play it with my bow, it's going to be so much easier. So let's try this again. And look at that, it's a miracle. I can play all of my, exactly what I planned, my three and my one. I figured out what I need to move and I figured out what I need to concentrate on so that when I play it through, I can get it to work together much more easily and then I can move on to the rest of the line. So that's how I would work one line at a time through this piece. In another track, you'll hear a playthrough at a slower tempo, and then you'll have the opportunity to play it with me with the piano track, and then you'll have the opportunity to play it by yourself with the piano track. So hope you enjoy working on Lightly Row. <laughs>